Gauri Chamaya, Radhikaya Jadali, Krishna, Krishna Bhakta, Tadabhakta, Namaya Namaha, Dhamsa Kaupati Rudyascha, Kripa Sindhu Devacha, Patita Nam Pavano Bhyo, Vaishnava Bhyo, Namaya Namaha, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Pravanitya Nanda Siya Bhita Jadadha Shiva Sadi Gauravadda Vinna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo 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 Hare Hare Nanda Mukhi, come up here. Too old for coloring books. <laughs> so, last night we heard a little bit the talk between Nard and Yasadev. Even the whole Vedas without devotion to Krishna, useless. Today someone was saying, oh, where does it say in the Vedas to chant Hare now? It's like someone really hearing the whole Ramayana and asking, what was the name of Ram's wife again? <laughs> so, Vede Ramaya, Vede Ramayana Cheva Purani Bharavattacha, Adaranti Cha Chamadre Cha Harisavatri Giti. If you look in all the Vedas, the Ramayana, Purana, the Mahabharata, and the beginning and the middle and the end is only one thing, the name of Krishna, Hari Sarvatikit. So, today is last day. Some will be happy, some will be sad. So, we should hear a little bit of something of our Pryojan, our goal. So, even though Vrindavan and Mathura appear very close. You can go by tempo from Mathura to Vrindavan in half an hour. Cost nine rupees these days. What's that? Twenty cents? But really, Vrindavan and Mathura are millions of miles apart. Therefore, we only worship that Krishna in Vrindavan. As Krishna is worshipful, then his Vrindavan is also worshipful. Janice, when you're coming? Yes. Vrindavan. <laughs> what? <laughs> How long for? Six weeks. Who are you staying with? In this come. Yes. No, no, no. Wow. <laughs> How did you like it? Come again? This time stay with us? A different experience? Parameka Nagachati. As Krishna is worshipful, his Vrindavan is worshipful. They will worship that Krishna in Vrindavan. Aradyo Bhagavan Brajesh Tamaya Tadama Vrindavanam. Ramya, Kripaji, Upasana, Brajabhubi, Bhargenaya, Kalpitaha, Srimad Bhagavatam, Pramana Mabalam, Pramo Pumato Mahan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Matamidam, Tatra, Adaro, Naparaha. There are many Bhagavans, many incarnations, but who do we worship? Krishna. A rabbi of Bhagavan, Prajashatana. Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj. Not that Krishna in Dwarka or that Krishna in Mathura or even the Krishna in Vaikuntha. We worship Krishna in Braj. The son of Nanda Maharaj. That means the king of Vrindavan is not even Krishna. It's his father, Nanda Maharaj. Every one entrance into Vrindavan have to take permission from Krishna's father, not from Krishna. Krishna, give me a place in Vrindavan, and Krishna will say, I have to ask my father first. Vrindavasis have such a position. 
Tandama Bindramya Kuchiru Pasana Brajabhumi Bhagena Yakalpita. Many ways of loving Krishna, serving him, but the best is that of the Brajagopis. Srimad, what is the proof? Srimad Bhavatam is the proof. Srimad Bhavatam, Pramana Mama. We not accept Veda, we accept the fruit of the Veda. That is the Srimad Bhavatam. Last night we spoke, someone became disturbed. Even Vyasa was disturbed. What to speak of Gokesh? <laughs> Even Vyasa was disturbed after writing all the Vedas. Then how Gokesh could be peaceful after hearing them all? If he got mercy of now, then he could understand what was the essence of everything. Not so easy like we think. I will read Vedas and understand the essence. Impossible. If we want to understand, we have to sit at the feet of Vaishnava and hear. Then we can understand. So, the Srimad Bhagavatam is the proof. And what is our goal? Prema. Prem Bhumatma. This is the opinion of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We don't care for the opinion of millions of Gorkeshavas or anyone else. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Param. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Tabildam. Tatadam. No param. We do not accept the opinion of anyone else. We don't care. Mr. Mount Chakataka was said like that. So, difficult to digest. We ask could not digest without the mercy of Naya. So, we should not think that we can control the Supreme Lord by our brain. How big is the brain? Would you take it out of its socket? 32 ounces, right? Some more or less? <laughs> no comment. 85% of that is water. <laughs> so, we should not think the Lord will come very easily within a 32 ounce brain. Need mercy of Vaishnavas. So, don't forget, even though Brindavan and Matura look similar, millions of miles apart in the moon. Therefore, devotees never like to leave Brindavan. One should live in Brindavan. Janice, why you left and came back? Shame on you. One should live there. If you cannot live there, then you should remember Brindavan by mind. So, on the edge of Vrindavan Mathura is a village called Batro. We go there every year for Parikram. So every day, like we have our daily activities, and the monkey, what's your daily activities? Wake up, chant high now, right? Serve your mother, offer something to the Lord, right? That's your daily activities. Try and become devotee. It's not enough being born into the Roti family. That is not enough. We have to make up our own minds. I will serve Krishna. That no one can give you by birth. That will be your own decision. So anyway, Batrol is on the border. So like we have our daily activities, Krishna has his daily activities. The difference is, in this world, everything is controlled by time. But in the spiritual world, there's no time. There's only eternal present tense. For that reason, we say Krishna's pastimes are eternal. So Krishna every day wakes up. He goes, performs his cow milking. Performs activities like wrestling, exercise. He takes bath. <coughs> he goes for breakfast. Then he goes for cow grazing. So Krishna's group of cows come out. And all his friends have their group of cows. All merge into one big river of cows and coward boys. They go to different forests. Twelve main forests of birch, they go cow grazing. So one day, by mistake, some miscommunication, Krishna went to one forest and all the lunch boxes went to another forest. So coward boys became depressed. We are hungry. Because we are the same as Krishna, Krishna must also be hungry. Therefore, Rama, Rama, Mahabaho, Krishna, Dusta, Nivatana. Oh, Ram, Balaram, your arms are very strong. Krishna, Dusta, Nivatana. Oh, Krishna, you destroy many wicked demons. You are the chastiser of the wicked. But there is one big demon attacking us. Please do something about that demon. Then Krishna, Balaram asked, where is that demon? You cannot see him. He's inside our stomachs. <laughs> he is called? Hunger. 
If you could kill him, that would be very good. <laughs> How can I kill him? He can only be killed by samosas, <laughs> sweet rice, maopoyas, chapatis, samjis. That is the only way the demon can be killed. So, again and again, the boys asked Krishna, we are very hungry, please do something. That time Krishna spoke to the boys. Payata Deva Yajana. Me here, there are some Brahmanas doing Deva Yajana. They are doing fire sacrifice. They are very learned in the Vedas. And they are performing Angira sacrifice to go to the heavenly planets. That means they have material desires. If you go there, then you can request, beg some food from them. Do not ask in my name, do not ask for Krishna, the son of Nanda, because we are low, low family, coward boys. But if you ask in the name of Balaram, you will definitely get something, because Balaram comes from royal family. His father is Vasudev. When you go there, do not say, we beg food on behalf of Krishna, because maybe you will not get anything. You should beg some food on behalf of Balaram. Explain that you have been sent by us, you are very hungry, please donate some food. It said, any sacrifice where there is no distribution of some prashad or some panami, that is tamasic sacrifice. Therefore, whenever Vaishnavas have kata, we always try and give some prashad. So, the boy is very hungry, they went to the village of Batro. Bat means <coughs> rice, actually. Rice Hill. Good place to live. <laughs> Thus the Brahmanas or Karma Kandis. Karma Kandi means those persons who worship according to Vedic injunctions, but their goal is some material goal. Especially the celestial planets. Okay? Karma Kandi. Therefore the boys came, they did pronounce. Hey Bhumi Deva Shmita. Shrut Shmita. Sorry. All lords of the earth, planet Shrutva, please hear us. Krishna Adesa Sakadina. We have been sent here by Krishna. Pratam Janita Badram Vo Gopan No Rama Choditam. We have been sent here also on the instruction of Balaram. Please acknowledge our arrival. When the Brahmanas were so much absorbed in their fire sacrifice, they never even looked at the boys, never paid them any attention. So boys <coughs> spoke a little bit louder. Lord Balaram and Achuta are nearby. They are tending their cows. They are very hungry. Please give them some of your food. O Brahmanas, you know all religious principles. According to religious principles, if a guest comes, you cannot send him away empty-handed. Then there's a conversation here. The Brahmanas may say, but boys, we are Brahmanas and you are coward boys. How can you eat before the Brahmanas eat? Just like in Vaishnavas, first we give sannyasis and senior devotees, then we take last. In the same way, Krishna and are not Brahmanas. How can they eat before us? Then they give some argument. The boy said, but Krishna and are very hungry. Of course you know the Vedic injunctions. Anasyak Shuditam Patram. Food should always be given to those who are hungry. But the Brahmanas, their mind is absorbed in petty material desires, did not give any attention to the servants of Krishna, the other cowherd boys. Therefore, the Brahmanas did not say yes, the Brahmanas did, say, did not say no. They completely ignored them and continued doing their fire sacrifice. That time the boys also know everything. We should not think that devotee of Krishna is ignorant. They know everything. Therefore, the boys gave some logic and argument. One may say, how can I distribute food? The lecture does Sacrifice is not finished yet. So the boys said, except during the interval between the initiation of the, between the beginning of the sacrifice and the sacrifice of the animal, means, except during that time, the beginning and the sacrifice of the animal, food cannot be given. That's already been done, so there's no fault in offering food even now. Iti te bhagavad yachnam srindvato pina susruvu 
Sutra sa Bhuri Kaimano Bali Sabri Damanina. The Brahmanas heard the prayers of the coward boys, but they did not pay any attention. Indeed, they were full of material desires and entangled in elaborate rituals. Although they consider themselves learned in Vedic understanding, reminds me of someone else, they were actually inexperienced fools. Even though the ingredients of the sacrifice is Krishna, the place is also Krishna, the time is Krishna, the mantra is Krishna, the demigod is Krishna, the priests, the rituals, the mantras, the paraphernalia, the performing, the offering, and the results are all aspects of the opulence of Krishna. Those Brahmins bewildered could not understand anything. They failed to recognize the absolute personality when he appeared before them. Thus bewildered by the false identification with these physical bodies, they could not show Krishna proper respect. Means to not respect Krishna's devotees means to not respect Krishna. Same thing. Na the yad om iti prachur. Om means yes. When the Brahmanas did not say yes or no, the boys, very depressed, returned back to Krishna and Balaram. Krishna smiled. Means by smiling, he said, when you beg, you cannot expect every time to get something. That is the rules of begging. So Krishna indicated that by his smile. Then he said to the boys again, my dear boys, this time, go to the wives of the Brahmins and tell them you have come from Krishna and Bala. They will certainly give you all the food they want. They are most affectionate towards me. Indeed, their intelligence is directed to me alone. Why? Those ladies always hearing about Krishna because their village is on the border between even now today. If you go between Vrindavan and Mathura, you have to pass through this village. So gopis, coward boys, many people, they take ghee, paneer, yogurt, milk products, come in. Aranjana. Okay, Aranjana. Hare Krishna. Thank you for coming, even though you're late. <laughs> Okay, Move this forward. You sit there, Chiranji, if you're brave yeah. enough. Yeah. Huh? Don't we have plenty of time? Is the door made already? No problem. No problem. You're not blocking anyone. Very good. So. Therefore, even today, if you want to go to Mathura, you have to pass through Batra. Therefore, the gopis and many other residents of Braj, when they would go towards Mathura to sell their milk products, they would stop, and nature of women always some gossip. <coughs> no comment. <laughs> Ask the ladies, the Brijabasis, especially Braj gopis, they would talk about Krishna. Have you seen the son of Mamma Maharaj? Oh, you have not seen him. Your life is useless. How much he is attractive. How much he is full of affection. How soft are his limbs. How many good qualities he has. Thus, Shred Shrutva Achutam Papayatam Nityam Tadashanat Utsaka Utsaka Tadkata Utsaka Manaso Bahubo Jata Sambama. The wives of the Brahmanas were very eager to see Krishna. Why? Their minds had become enchanted by hearing about him. Thus, as soon as the boys came and said, Oh, mothers, Krishna and Balaam have come nearby, and the wives of the Brahmanas became stunned. And the coward boys became depressed again. <laughs> they not said yes, they not said no. <coughs> Thus, those ladies criticized themselves. Oh, mind, you are so low class. Even though Krishna and Balaam are very hungry and living nearby, you have not given up your life. Thus those ladies immediately filled many baskets, many bottles, many jugs, many bowls, full of the four kinds of foodstuffs. You know the four kinds of foodstuffs, Ranjana? For ten bonus points. Yeah. Yeah. That which is licked, 
chewed, drunk, and sucked. So the four types of foodstuffs they piled in so many bowls made of crystals, silver, gold, and they piled it on the head and like the river runs to the ocean, those line of ladies ran towards Krishna Balaram. Many obstacles were there, their husbands, their brothers-in-law, their parents-in-law, their relatives, the Gurujan means senior, old bags, so old ladies in the village, <laughs> all watching, all were trying to stop them, don't go, don't go, if you go you cannot come back, harsh words they used, but they could not be deviated. Isn't it? Your old mother in law, uh, where are you going? Although their husbands, brothers, sons, and other relatives forbid them, forbid them from going to see Krishna, they could not be checked. Just like when a river is in flood, what is it to do? It crosses banks, it breaks trees, it even goes over mountains, breaks bridges, and goes towards the ocean. Thus, on the bank of the Yamuna, in a garden decorated with Ashok trees. They caught sight of Krishna resting his hand upon the shoulder of a friend. And they saw Balaram there also. Shamam Hiranya, famous verse. Shamam Hiranya Padidam Vadimalya Barha Datu Prava Natu Vesha Manu Vetamse Vinyasta Hastam Atadena Nanuma Abjam Kano Palo Kapalo Mukabja Hastam famous verse. How did he look? Before they had only heard about Krishna, but now they are seeing him directly. Therefore they had so much purva rag, means so much love for Krishna, but not met him yet, just by hearing. Again and again we see in the Bhagavatam the same thing. People would ask Guru that how we can love Krishna, we never met him. And Guru said, you love him by first hearing about him. These ladies, the wives of the brahmanas, never met Krishna, but they have de dedicated their hearts completely just by hearing from the gopis. Rukmini also, she was only five years old, young girl. But Narayamani would come to visit her father, and Narayamani was always talking about Krishna's name, form, qualities and pastimes. How old are you? Mm -hmm. About time for marriage. Rukmini was that old. <laughs> Sita was 11 to 11, 12. Okay, don't worry, now it's Kali Yuga. So, we're meeting only a small girl, five or six years old. But now when he was always talking about Krishna, his chest is very broad, his waist is very thin, he walks like a lion. Some animals famous in walking, lions, tigers. So he walks like a lion, but he has all good qualities. He is very soft, very affectionate. And Rukmani thought, I will marry him, I will not marry any other man. But she never met Krishna. The next day was her marriage, Rukmini wrote 11 verses, love letter. But she never met Krishna. The whole real meeting comes by hearing. So they saw him for the first time. Shamam Hiranya Padidam Vanimaya Bharha. Shamam Hiranya Padidam. His complexion was dark like a rain cloud. Hirani Paridim, Vanamalya Bahai, he wore a peacock feather on his head and a garland made of forest flowers. Vanamalya's garland, only three types of flowers. But Vanamali made of five. And goes right down past the knees. So Vanamalya Bahai, he wore a very attractive garland around his neck. And when Krishna would walk, that garland would also dance. He was decorated not like Lord Narayan in Vaikuntha. Lord Narayan has so many gold ornaments, crowns, but Krishna, most of his ornaments made of flowers. Thus he was decorated with minerals, flower buds, a garland of forest flowers and leaves. He was dressed like a dancer on a stage. Someone said, oh, before Krishna only had one color, now deities have how many colors? Oh, but Krishna dressed in so many different colors, like a dancer. He rested one hand on the shoulder of his friend, and in the other hand he had a blue lotus, which he was swinging. Like Brahman said, like a churning rod. With that swinging, he was churning the hearts of those ladies. 
leaves he had hanging down on his ears. His hair was very long hanging over his cheeks and he was smiling very attractively. Thus, for a long time those ladies had heard about Krishna and his glories had become the constant, constant ornaments of their ears. In their minds they were always absorbed in remembering him. And now for the first time they saw him, they took Krishna and embraced him through the eyes and in the core of their hearts they embraced him very deeply. In this way they gave up the pain of separation from him. Very culture, very strict. We don't think it's like today in Maui. A woman who leaves a house without permission of her husband, she cannot come back. So it's not easy thing, not a small thing. That means rejected from the village, rejected from society forever. Those ladies had given up everything against the order of everyone they had come to meet Krishna. Thus, those women had given up all material desires to reach him. And when they came, what did Krishna say? Same famous verse. Swagatam vara mahabhago. Asyatam karavami kim. It's almost the same verse that Krishna spoke to the gopis in Rasvila. One, two words different. Yana dudikshaya prata upapabam idam bhavi. Idam hiva. But the same words, the first two lines. Swagatam vara mahabhago. Karashikim karamiham. A few words here and there. When the gopis came, the gopis also left everything here in the sound of Krishna's flute. They ran towards Vamsivat. Their husbands and relatives also forbade them. Some gopis were looking after others' babies, but when they heard the sound of the flute, they ran. Some are fleeing their husbands. Gopis said, I'm just going for another chapati. Five hours later, her husband was thinking where she went. She went to the forest. Some gopis were swinging babies, but as soon as they heard the sound of the flute, they left everything. Some gopis were dead. They were dressing, but they had no time to finish. So their skirt they put here, and their blouse they put here. Right? Some gopis had only put makeup on one eye. When they came to Krishna, oh, only one eye. Then with his hand, Krishna did the other eye. So when the gopis left everything and came to Krishna, Krishna said the same thing, Swagatamba, Mahabhata, Karasakim, Karamiham, Gopis, you have given up, why you have come here in the middle of the night? You are most fortunate, sit down, make yourself comfortable. What can I do for you? So when the Gopis left everything and came to Krishna, Krishna welcomed them, Oh Gopis, why have you come here? Have you come here to see the nice forest? Have you come here to see Vrindavan and the full moon? Now that you have seen the forest, you can return back to your husbands. Why? I am a brahmachari, and you are beautiful young women. It is not proper that you stay here alone with me. This forest is also full of many dangerous animals. A woman who gives up her husband to engage in adulterous affairs achieves a hellish destination. Even if the husband is ugly, deformed, or fat, boring, rude and low class, or all of the above. Woman should not leave him. It is the woman's highest responsibility to serve her husband. Gopis return home. One cannot achieve me simply by association. One can achieve me by practicing the limbs of devotion, like hearing, chanting, and remembering me. So when Krishna said that to the Gopis, what did the Gopis say? Ranjana? Remember? Very harsh words, imagine. The gopis had given up everything to come to Krishna and Krishna was rejecting them. So some gopis wept, some gopis gave answer. Oh Krishna, very nice, you are giving us so many instructions on Vedic culture. Therefore you are like our guru. And the Vedas say, Pakasamanti Guru Puja Tatarchi before serving even the Supreme Lord, one should serve Guru first. Therefore, Krishna, we will not go back, we will stay here with you. And many arguments the gopis came. Oh. Also, Krishna's words are very funny. If you don't move the Sanskrit here and there, Krishna's words have another meaning. 
Welcome, gopis. I think you have not come to the forest to see the beauty of these flowers in the full moon. You have come here for me. Don't worry, do not go back to your husbands, because your husbands are all old, stupid, and ugly anyway. <laughs> do not go home, stay here with me. I am not a brahmachai. And you are a beautiful young woman. Therefore, do not go home, stay. So, gopis, two meanings. Of course, gopis had so many conflicting emotions, so much attraction to Krishna, yet also so much fear, so much shame, so many things were there. So gopis decided we will not go back. They came on one-way ticket. And Krishna said the same thing to the wives of the brahmanas. Do not stay here. You should return back. Krishna gave some other arguments. You should return to the sacrifice, sacrificial arena because your husbands, the brahmanas, are householders. I need your assistance to finish the sacrifice. Therefore the wives of the Brahmins replied, Shripatni Vacha, Naivam Vibhu, Arhati Bhavam, Garitam Nishamsam, Satyam Kurusham Nigamam, Tavapada Mulam, Pratavayam Tulasidam Padavavit, Padavava Shristam Keshe Nivodatam Atilingaya Samastabandha. O Krishna, O Almighty One, do not speak such cruel words to us. Rather, you should promise, you should fulfill your promise that you made to properly reciprocate with your devotees according to their surrender. We have given up everything and come to your lotus feet. And now that we have retained you, we simply wish to remain here in the forest. Even if you will not accept us as lovers, still the tulsi which you kept on your feet, which you kick off, we will keep that upon our heads and here in the forest and we will maintain our lives. You may neglectfully kick us away with your lotus feet, but we have given up all other relationships. Our husbands, fathers, sons and brothers, relatives and friends will no longer take us back. They will who else except you will give us shelter. Since we have thrown ourselves at your lotus feet, we have no other destination. Oh Krishna, please fulfill our desires. Krishna said, don't worry, return home without fear. Your husbands will not be envious of you. Neither will your fathers, brons, brothers, sons, or other relatives. Within the heart, I will personally inspire them. Indeed, even the demigods will approve of you. For you to remain in my bodily association would not please the people in this world, nor would be the best way to increase your love for me. You should return home, fix your minds upon me, and very soon you will attain. Srinvata Dasana Dhyanat Maya Bhava Anukitanat Natatasani Karsina Patiyata Vatobhyan One cannot achieve love for me simply by being near me, rather, it is by hearing about me, seeing my deity form, meditating upon me, chanting my names and glories that love for me develops, not only by physical proximity. Therefore, return to your homes. This is also the same verse Krishna spoke to the Gopis. So, Chandiv, same situation. The Gopis gave up everything, came to Krishna. Krishna told them to go back, they didn't go back. And the wives of the Brahmanas also gave up everything, came to Krishna. Krishna told them to go back, and they did go back. Why? What's the difference? Explain. The wives of the Brahmanas are still bound by um, their own But they've given it all up. Okay. Well, there's, a, there's actually a, a vast significance of difference that I'm not sure of. Huh? It's a great thing. Krishna said the same thing to the gopis, but the gopis not accepted it. Oh, wait, 
Only gobies can achieve Krishna the mood of Parthi Ras. Understand, Rajana? Two relations are there. One is married relationship, one is unmarried relationship. Swakya and Parakya. All other incarnations have married relationships. Like Lord Narayan, always married to Lakshmi. Even Lord Ram, always married to Sita. When Ram first saw Sita, then he so much felt attraction, then he criticized himself. Ah, what I'm doing. I'm a disgrace to my dynasty. No one my dynasty loved a woman before marriage. And I'm loving a woman before marriage. Then Lakshman said, Don't worry, Lord, that means you will marry her. <laughs> so Sita and Ram have so much affection. But their affection is based, it has a cause. What's the cause of their affection, Shampriya? <laughs> marriage. Without marriage, there can be no love between Sita and Ram because it's illegal. And Lord Ram came to establish Vedic principles. Lord Ram is Mahajara Purushottam. Therefore, Jiva Goswami says, married relationships and fault may be there. Why husbands, why wife serves the husband? Husband gives chapatis. Husband gives food. Husband gives accommodation. Husband gives clothes. Husband gives children. Husband gives many things. Or this is meant to. <laughs> If a wife feels indebted, it is my duty to serve him. Therefore, the love of Sita and Ram, the love of husband and wife has a cause, that cause is marriage. <laughs> but, <coughs> Krishna is not married to the gopis. He does not give them accommodation. He does not give them clothes. He does not give them food. He doesn't pay them a monthly wage. Why do the gopis serve him? Friend. To Krishna. They married to other men, but why do they serve Krishna? Krishna doesn't give them anything. Why do they serve Krishna? Because they love him. A wife may not love husband, but anyway has to serve because duty and many other things. But the gopis do not have to serve Krishna. Why they do so? Only out of affection. Therefore, the unmarried relationship in the spiritual world is the purest. Of course, in this world is the most degraded and disgusting. So forget that. Therefore, only gopis can serve in Parikiras. Oh. And who is the source of all Parikiras? Damodar. Shumadi Radhika. Because the lady, the wives of the Brahmanas had not come under the protection of Shumadi Radhika, they could not achieve Krishna and Vrindavan. Without the shelter of Radharani, no one can achieve Vrindavan, no one can achieve Krishna. Therefore, the wives of the Brahmanas not came under the guidance of Radharani, therefore they are not so much successful. Also, Brahmanas are very much respected for Krishna, respected by Krishna. There's that verse, Go Brahmanya Hitayacha. Namo Brahmanya Devaya Go Brahmanya Hitayacha Jagar Hitaya Go Vinda Namo Namaha Krishna always respects and serves the cows and the Brahmins. How can Krishna accept the wives of the Brahmins? Because the wives of the Brahmins are worshipful for Krishna. The wife of a Brahmin is like mother. And how Krishna can do that? He cannot. There are many reasons why Krishna accepted the gopis. And he did not accept the wives of the Brahmins. But these are all like secondary points. The main point is the gopis came with a one-way ticket. Now, have you heard of Cortez? Yes, <laughs> yes famous guy. But anyway, some things of course we will not accept. But his idea was very good. Not about killing all the Mexicans. But his idea was good idea. Why he was so successful? He came with an army just in five boats. That time boats were not very big. How many guys he had with him? 200, 300? How could two or three hundred guys capture a whole huge place like Mexico? You know the story, London? He came with five boats, he got out all the guns, all the soldiers, all the horses. Then he sent a guy back to burn the boats to ashes. <laughs> no return ticket. No regress on Spaniel, no, it's possible. 
could not go back to Spain because everything was finished. Because they had nothing to return to. They went forward with one point of determination. That's how they were so successful. The Gopis had given up everything completely. Then they came to Krishna. When Krishna said, go back, Gopis said, go back to what? We have nothing to go back to. For that reason, even Krishna tried to send them back. He was not successful. Therefore, Gopis achieved his devotion. Therefore, Guru Maharaj would say in the beginning when he first came, do or die. Okay, Nandamukhi, ready to die? Do or die. If we come with this one point of view, then we can be successful. Our Param Gurudev came to Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur. He was only a 16-year-old boy. Then he was in the back and many devotees, disciples came to Saraswati Thakur. Give Panam Gurudev, we are going home. Then Saraswati Thakur began to cry. Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur, you are all cheating. You promised to give up everything and do bhajan of Krishna. And with that promise, I made some friendship with you. Now you are going back home. And all the disciples were, we put it there, we bought return tickets. And Saraswati Thakur said, do not come to Buddha with a return ticket. Come with one-way ticket. Means we should come with a feeling that I have seen everything. Nothing for me to look back to. I have been there and done that. So when we come to the feet of Guru, come to the feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then we come with that ticket. Okay, Damodar, no more looking back. Where's my pakol? Where's my this? Where's my that? Don't do these things. These things are all return tickets because you're relying on those things for happiness. You're not relying on bhajan for happiness. So Krishna sent the queens of the wives of the brahmins back because they had some other desire. So if we have other desires, then how Krishna will turn us? How Krishna will accept us? So, that is the difference between the gopis and the wives of the brahmins. But Krishna said, don't worry, you'll go back, but you'll be accepted by everything, there is no loss. And believing Krishna's words, they went back. But Krishna had said the same thing to the Braja gopis, the Braja gopis would not have returned. Thus, instructed the wives of the brahmins returned back to the place of the fire sacrifice, the brahmanas, the husbands, did not find any fault with their wives. And together they finished the sacrifice. One lady was, could not return, leave and take her vegetables to Krishna. When she tried to leave the house, what happened? Husband locked her in the room. One of the ladies had been forcibly kept back by her husband. When she heard the others describe the Supreme Lord Krishna, she embraced him within her heart and gave up her material body, the basis of bondage to material action. Means by remembering Krishna, the material qualities in her body were destroyed, and in her spiritual body she achieved Krishna in the form of a gopi. Just like if you have a green avocado, how do you make it ripe, Shampriya? Really? Mm -hmm. Did you do that? Yes. Really? One of the secret weapon. <laughs> anyway, mango, banana, or papaya should be put in some warm place. <coughs> Therefore, that wine lady who was checked by the others, she was put in the fire of separation. That fire of separation made her mature in her devotion. She could achieve Krishna in the mood of the gopis. So, Krishna. Bhagavanapi, Govinda, Govinda and the coward boys enjoyed all the preparations. Krishna fed the boys first, then he took later. <laughs> and after the boys had eaten, Krishna himself took the preparations. Thus, completely fed, everyone was very happy. Ivam lila naravapu nilokam manusilanam rene gopagopinam ramayam rupabhakti. Ivam Lila Naravapu. Krishna appeared Naravapu in a human like form. Nilokam Anusulanam. And he behaved Nilokam Anusulanam. He behaved like a resident of the earth planet. I'll read the translation. The Supreme Lord appearing like a human being to perform his pastimes imitated the ways of human society. He 
always enjoyed pleasing the cows, the coward boys, the coward girls, and his beauty, words, and actions. Why Krishna is swallowed by the land of topmost incarnation? Because no incarnation comes so close to us. Krishna acts like a human being. For example, Lord Narayan always has four hands. If someone walked in the door with four hands, what was the first thing you would think? Manjana. He's not a human being. <laughs> if someone has a non-human-like appearance, automatically, the feelings of all your friends come. No, 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 never walks. He never touches the ground. How can we make friends with someone who never touches the ground? He always rides on Garuda. He has four hands with many weapons. Therefore, towards Lord Narayan, there will always must be feelings of all reverence. He is great, I am small. You know? In Chaitanya Charimrita, it's mentioned. The whole world worships me with all reverence, but I am not controlled by such feelings. Ami Iswara Mani Apanekahim Tabin Bas Ami Nahoyati. If someone thinks, I am very small and Krishna is the supreme controller, I am not controlled by such feelings, I am not subordinated by their affection. Therefore, higher than Lord, we consider Lord Ram to be even higher than Lord Narayan. Why? Lord Narayan has no human pastimes. Lord Narayan has no mother and father. Lord Narayan has no children, no grandparents. No grandparents. Lord Narayan never went to school. Lord Narayan never took birth. He has no mother and father. Everything about Lord Narayan's pastimes are alokic, non-human. Right? Full of opulence. But Lord Ram we consider superior to Lord Narayan. Why Lord Narayan acts like a human being so much? Lord Ram has mother and father. Lord Ram even has brothers. Three brothers. He has mother and father. He has guru. He went to school. Therefore, Ram is so much close to us. But Ram is king. Madhyara Purushot is king. Therefore, there is also a distance. Can I make friends with a king also? But Krishna is topmost. Why? He acts just like us. He has mother and father. He went to school. And he's not a king, he's a coward boy. <laughs> <laughs> No one thinks Krishna is prince. We are superior to Krishna. They never think Krishna is greater than us. Everyone in Vrindavan thinks Krishna is smaller than us. That's why we have to give him mercy and affection. Yeah. <laughs> if Krishna is playing with the coward boys and there's some fight, some argument, Krishna says, you don't know who I am? The coward boys say, who the hell do you think you are? You don't know who I am? <laughs> Sri Dhar. They're playing, the loser has to carry the winning team on his shoulders to the mango tree, become a horse. You know, like on all fours. Krishna's team lost, then Sri Dham says, assume the position. <laughs> become a horse. Then Krishna said, this game is stupid. I'm not playing your stupid game. You don't know who I am? I'm Krishna. Son of Mandamaraj. Bhagavan. And Sridhar says, if anyone's by the way, it's me, not you. <laughs> Don't forget, Krishna, I'm three days older than you. Look at these guns. <laughs> I defeat you in wrestling every morning. You forget? I'm also better looking than you. Your father only has 900,000 cows, but my father is Bishabhanu Maharaj. He has 100,000 cows. So Krishna, you are not superior to me by age, beauty, strength, wealth, or anything else. <coughs> Actually, we're just doing you a favor letting you play with us at all. <laughs> Tell him directly. If you don't like it, get out of here. We don't want you. And Krishna begins crying. Oh, brothers, don't throw me out. Krishna does put now I'm catching Sri Dham's feet. He's become the horse. I'm ready. I'll take you two times to the mango tree, but don't throw me out of your game. Please, please. So Krishna becomes subordinate only to that book. That mood you only find in Braj, you cannot find that in Dwarka, you cannot find that in Ayodhya, or to speak of Akuta. Okay, Rendon, understand? So Krishna, his pastimes, he comes so close. 
He becomes subordinate to the devotees in a way no other incarnation does. That's why Krishna is Swami Bhagavan, because he's so much controlled by the affection of his devotees. No other incarnation is, becomes controlled as Krishna becomes controlled. Because God must have everything. He must be the supreme controller, and he also must be the supreme controlled. He must be independent, he also must be subordinate. Okay? So Krishna, shut up. Krishna has two qualities. Atmaram, self-sufficient. But in Vrindavan he has the quality of Paramata, dependent on others. You see, Krishna always dependent on everyone else. Without Marisoda, he cannot eat. Without Nanda Maharaj, he cannot do anything. Without the gopis, he cannot perform any ruler, he cannot be happy. Without his devotees, Krishna is zero. If all Krishna's qualities, all his beauty, all his attributes come from his devotees. Okay? So Bhagavan manifests his glories according to the devotee he's with. Understand? When Bhagavan how many forms of God are there, Chandra? Thank you. Mm-hmm. One. <laughs> Back to Nautakura says in Vaishnava Siddhanta Mala. How many forms of God are there? Mm-hmm. One. One! <laughs> Who said limitless? Shame on you, Gopal. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Back to Nautakura says one. You read Vaishnava Siddhanta Mala, the first thing, how many forms of God are there? There is only one. Otherwise, there's 15 or 20 other ones running around. The actual truth is not 15 or 20, there's one. Who is that actual truth? That is Krishna. But he is perceived according to the devotion in the heart of the person. Hanuman has a type of devotion, therefore he perceives Krishna as Ramchandra. Arjuna perceives Krishna as his friend. Madhya Soda perceives Krishna as her son. Everything depends on the mood of the devotee, but the absolute truth is one. Like a Chintamani, whatever you want, the Chintamani gives you. Okay? So Krishna reveals himself according to the quality of the devotee. And who has the highest qualities? Who are the topmost devotees? Brijabhasis. And of all the Brijabhasis, the gopis are the topmost. So only in Vrindavan he manifests his sweetness, his affection, his qualities, his lila to the topmost degree. So Ivan Nala, uh, Ivan Lila Naravapu, Niloka Manusilana. In Vrindavan only, he manifests a human-like form, Nilokam Anusilam, and he behaves like a human being. And he always busies himself 24 hours giving ha- trying to give happiness to the devotees, especially the cows, the gops and the gopis, Ramayan, Rupa, Vakkriti. All his beauty, all his qualities, he uses only to give happiness to the devotees. So, in this way, Krishna did not directly enjoy with the wives of the brahmanas, but he did enjoy with the wives of the coward men. This is the intention of this verse. Nila Vad Naravapa means that Krishna appeared as a human being to relish his pastimes. It indicates that because of the pre- predominance of the Nila Shakti over Krishna's other Shaktis, the pastimes of the brahmanas wives did not culminate in direct enjoyment with them. Enjoying himself rather with the cows, coward men and gopis, Krishna overwhelmed them with the bliss. Overwhelmed them with bliss by his form, words and actions. Gopinam refers to the young gopis rather than the elderly ones with maternal affection because of the time and context of the verse. So that how we measure, that's how we measure the greatness of the Lord, by His sweetness, not just by His opulences. Okay, Rajan, understand? Yes. With so much luck we could come. Before Mahaprabhu, no one understood any of these things. The Brahmanas came to their senses. What are we doing? What's the time? Where's my watch? The Brahmanas came to their senses. When they came back and saw their wife who were full of love of God, love of Krishna, they thought, what are we doing? We have sinned. We have denied the request of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who deceptively appeared as an ordinary human being. The Brahmanas remembered, 
to murder their wives, pure devotion. And seeing their own lack of devotion, the Brahmanas felt most sorrowful and condemned themselves. Two famous verses here. Dig Janma, yes, Jivigyate. Dig Bratam, Dig Bahugyatam. Dig Kulam, Dig Kriyadaksham, Vimukta Yete, Yadoksaje. Three births are there. Is it proper? Dintis are there. What are three births? Remember Mokhi? A hundred million US dollars. <laughs> three births. One is by mother. Okay, one gets a mother and father. First birth is by mother, second birth is by Guru. Then what's the third birth is sort of? Um, someone takes Upanayan by the second birth. Many people take Brahman thread, but do they get transcendental knowledge? So three births. First is by mother and father. Second is by Upanayan. Samskar. The third really is hearing Harikata. Three births. So, Dig Janma Yastri Vidyate. Alas, curse. Dig means fire on us. Fire on us. Fire on us. Our three births. Useless. Nastri Vidyate. Dig Bratam. All our vows. Dig Bratam. Useless. Dig Bahugyatam. Our knowledge of the scriptures. Useless. Dig Kulam. Our birth in a high family. Useless. Dig Kriya Daksham. Our expertise in Vedic sacrifice. Useless. Why? <laughs> we are against our Daksha Krishna. We did not serve him. Therefore, everything we did was useless. To hell with our threefold birth. To hell with our vow of celibacy. To hell with our extensive learning. To hell with our aristocratic background and our expertise in the rituals of sacrifice. These are all condemned because we are inimical to this transcendental personality of Godhead. Whatever we do which does not increase our attraction for hearing is also considered useless. What is that verse? Shama Siyeva Kevaha. What our activity we do, which does not increase our attraction for hearing, let alone, is considered useless. Therefore, all good qualities may be there, but without devotion, they're about as useful as ornaments on a dead body. Okay? Imagine Manoram died. Went to the funeral, but before she died, we put on lipstick, put on the eyeliner, colored the hair blonde, put on the best sari, and we called your parents over. Hey, come and look at Manoram. Isn't she nice? Would you feel happy there? <laughs> your parents would not be happy. No one becomes happy. Ornaments on a dead body make no one happy. All good qualities, jealous, without devotion, are like ornaments on a dead body. We should always remember this. Sometimes we find fault in devotee. Oh, he is not very truthful. He is not clean. He is this, he is that. But if devotion is there, everything is okay. But everything else may be there, but devotion is not there. Useless. Like Hanuman met with Ravan. Have you heard of Ravan? You never heard of Ravan? She's a devotee. She's a devotee. Who gave her neck beads? Who gave her name Ranjan? Really? Hmm. You're still with him? Good move. <laughs> Terrible fellow. We'll talk about him later. <laughs> Great have met one disciple of Kripalu in Australia. I remember amazing conversation. Great have said, who are you at this night? I'm with Kripalu. She said, oh, Kripalu. I said, oh, I heard he has sexual relations with his own disciples. That woman began crying. I was, how did you know I was one of them? Oh, there's so many. I know that was her. This is very bad. Lady disciple like daughter. How can you do that type of So, we're leaving there. All good qualities may be there, but unless devotion is there to Krishna, they're useless. 
Ahriman. Ravan is a big demon. Ram killed him. Have you heard of him? Didn't he? He kidnapped Sita. Now you know who he is, right? So, Ahriman, he wanted to meet with Ravan, therefore he allowed himself to be captured by Ravan's son, Meghna. Meghna threw a weapon called Magpas. It bound Hanuman. But Hanuman had a benediction that he could not be bound by anything. So he allowed himself to be bound because he wanted to talk with Ravan. So he went there. So Ravan was sitting on a huge throne. He was control of the entire creation. All the 33 million demigods were his servants. So powerful. He was so effulgent, even Hanuman could not look at him. So powerful. So handsome. So beautiful. We see him in the comic books. He's always black and ugly. You know how many wives he had? Shamsun? Shampoo? How many wives? Why? Why? Because he was so handsome. So Ravan was on this huge throne, and Hanuman was down low, and Hanuman thought, this is not cool. <laughs> so Hanuman, by his tail, <laughs> came up to the same way, a little bit higher than Ravan. <laughs> and Ravan laughed, because Ravan is a great hero also, a great father. He realized, oh, this monkey has so much character. <laughs> and Ravan asked him, oh, monkey, Hanuman, oh, monkey, who are you? Are you Indian disguise? Are you Shiva in disguise? Are you Brahma in disguise? Why are you destroyed my garden? Why are you killed so many of my soldiers? Why are you put to death my son? Who are you? Explain! Then Hanuman said, Brother, if you ask who is Ram, then maybe five, six hours I can give you some kata. <laughs> but who am I? I'm servant of Ram. Nasoham Kosadim. I'm servant of the son of Kosadim. When Ravan heard that, Ravan began laughing. Oh my God! I thought you were some important person, a king, Rajkumar, a prince, some demigod. But you're just a servant. <laughs> he began criticizing. Then Hanuman gave him nice instruction. Brother, you have everything: beauty. Buddha went to Fiji, and Fiji is one family called the Punjas. They own everything. Punjas motors. Punjas beer, Punjas soft drink, Punjas supermarket, Punjas rice, Punjas ghee. You cannot find anything with the name Punjas not on it. Everything they are. So Gurdjieff was staying in their house and they were like, and Gurdjieff said, don't be so much proud of your wealth. I mean, one lady was like, how much gold do you have? 10 grams? 15 grams? But Robin Hall City was made of gold. Even the toilets, it's everything. So much wealth controlled the whole universe. He was so powerful, he made everything opposite. If you did sinful activity, you could go to heaven. And if you did bad activity, you'd go to hell. Good activity. Good activity. Yeah. He was that much powerful. You read afterwards. These guys were not ordinary demons. So much powerful. Only because he was more than Ram, I think. So Hanuman said all these things. And he had so much learning. At the time of Ravan, no one knew the Vedas like Ravan. He was such a pundit. Ravan was invited to Ram's wedding. Because he was Brahmin, he came from Brahmin family. And after the wedding, Ram said, Do you know astrology? Sure, give me your hand. Then Ravan was reading the lines on the hand of Ram. He said, Oh my God, it says here, I will kidnap your wife. You will come to my island and kill me. Uh, and he started laughing and Ram started laughing. <laughs> and Yoga Maya came, they forgot everything again. <laughs> so Ravan knew all branches of the Vedas, such a pundit. He had ten heads and he knew all ten branches of the Vedas. In the time of Ravan, there was no one equal to him in austerity or learning. Big austerities he did. Big pundit. He came from Brahmin family. So handsome, so wealthy, so influential. Hanuman said, Brother, you have everything. These things cannot help you because you have no devotion to Ram. And Hanuman said, Who am I? I am a monkey. Which is the lowest birth? Monkey. Outside of Varnashram, Hanuman said, I never want to go to And outside Varnashram, I am low, fallen. Monkey means very restless, low class. But I am accepted. Even today, the whole world worships Hanuman. No one worships Ravan. Even no one calls their son Ravan. <laughs> like no one calls their son Adolf. <laughs> or Genghis. <laughs> no one calls their son Ravan. 
Just see the love that these women have developed for Krishna, the Lord of the universe. By their love for Krishna, they have broken the bondage of family attachment, which is very difficult to break. Nasam Dvijiti Samskaru, Nanivaso Guruvapi, Natapo Natami Mangsa, Nasocham Nakriya Subha, Tatapi Hi Uttama Sloka Krishna Yoga Swari Swari Bhakti Tridana Chasma Kam Samskara Dittamati. These women have never gone, they never took Brahman thread, Samskara. Nasam Dvijiti Samskara. Nanivasu Guru, they never resided in the ashram of the Guru. Na Tapo, they never did austerities, Nathmami Mangso. They do not know philosophy, what's the difference between body and spirit. They never studied this. Na Sacham, they are not clean. Na Kriyasubha, they never did any donations or parts, activities. We did all these things. Tatapi Hirutama Shoka, Krishna Yoga Swaras. But they have developed love for Krishna and we have not. But what did the wives of the Brahmanas do that the Brahmanas did not do? For Ten million bonus points, Chiranjeev? Oh, no. Association with devotees. They associated. They heard about Krishna. Therefore, all these things cannot cause devotion. High birth, austerities, cleanliness, charity, tapasya. These things cannot cause devotion. What is the birthplace of devotion, Chiranjeev? For one bonus point, Sadhu Sadhu. Mm -hmm. Association with devotees. Who's Kripalu's guru? Now, nothing. He has no guru. And how? Who is his guru? He has no guru. No guru, then no devotion. Then he cannot control himself. And everything he speaks, 90% is rubbish. Therefore, Nasa. Only one cause of their devotion. What is that? Sadhu Sangha. Therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Krishna Bhakti Janmamal Hoi Sadhu Sang Krishna Pram Janatana Purnamukya. The birthplace of devotion is association with devotees. And even after one achieves perfection, association with devotees will remain the main limb of devotion. Okay? Ranjana. What do you do? Have you been to India? Mm -hmm. Come again? When will you come? You're free now? <laughs> come, come, stay one, two months. So, Sadhu Sang, hearing guitar is the main limb. These brahmins did everything, but never associated with devotees. They could not get burned. And the wives did none of these things, but just heard from the gopis they achieved pure devotion. Nevertheless, they have firm devotion for Krishna, whose glories are chanted by the Vedas. Funny, someone said last night, the Vedas never tell us to chant the name of Krishna. But the Vedas themselves are always chanting the name of Krishna. People are praising. <laughs> Nevertheless, they have firm devotion for Lord Krishna, whose glories are chanted by the hymns of the Vedas. The Vedas talk only about that thing. If you read in the eleventh, if you read, read in the tenth canto, the Vedas themselves are offering prayers to the feet of the Gopis. So how you can think that the goal of the Vedas will be anything 
else except chanting the names of Krishna. Strange. We on our hand have no devotion for the Lord, even though we've executed all these other processes. Therefore, what's the cause of devotion? Rindana. The cause of devotion is devotion. Nothing else causes devotion. Bhakti samjatiya bhakti. Bhakti comes from bhakti. If we never associate with devotee, we cannot have devotion. Therefore, the brahmanas condemn themselves bitterly. Manu swata vimudanam pramatanam vihiyaya aho nahas marayam asa kopa vakya satam gati. We are infatuated with our household affairs. We have deviated completely from the goal of life. But just see. Hmm. Otherwise, Krishna has every desire is fulfilled. Why would he come begging? Krishna is at Malam. Up they come. Krishna has no unfulfilled desires because everything he desires is immediately fulfilled. And why Krishna would come begging for food? Just to give mercy to us, but we are so foolish we could not recognize it. No. Thus, Hidvanyam Bhajate Yasri, Sri, the goddess of fortune, does so much meditation just to hope to get the glance of the eye, just to get the glance of Krishna or touch his feet. But Krishna never looks at her. That Krishna will beg when even the goddess of fortune is begging for Krishna is astonishing. Tasmai Namo Bhagavate Krishna Anukunta Medasa. We offer our obeisances to Lord Krishna, the Supreme Lord. His intelligence is never bewildered. Whereas we, bewildered, are bewildered, and we simply move on the path of fruitive material action. Savaina Adya Purusha, we were bewildered by Lord Krishna's illusory potency. We could not understand who he was. We hope he will forgive us, they prayed. So question come, they all came together and prayed, we made a mistake, we made a mistake, we made a mistake. Krishna is the goal of love, to touch his lotus feet is our perfection. We deviated from the real goal. The question comes, why they didn't go? Krishna was just in the next forest, why they didn't go? Because they were afraid of Kamsa. <laughs> if they went and touched Krishna's feet, then the word would come to Kamsa, maybe Kamsa would kill them. So out of fear of the demon Kamsa, they did not go and touch Krishna's lotus feet. Any questions? The story, the story of Hanuman's uh, conversation with Mugabe. So, how did it culminate? I didn't, I didn't think of it. Ah, I didn't finish. Anyway, Ravan laughed. When it, well, Hanuman gave him so many good instructions. Hanuman laughed. Even the monkey is my guru. <laughs> Brother, now the monkey is my guru. Even the monkeys are giving me instructions. Come on. <laughs> so he wanted to kill Hanuman for giving him instructions. Then Divasan said, "No, no, you cannot kill a messenger. You can brand him, amputate him, whip him, but you cannot kill him." <laughs> then Ravan said, "Okay, that is true. What's the, what do we say in English? Don't shoot the messenger." <laughs> So monkey is very attached to his tail, burned his tail. So demons took so much cloth, so much ghee, coconut oil, they wrapped his tail in cloth, poured so much ghee and oil, and lit. Mm -hmm. That time Sita prayed to the fire drop, Oh, if I ever did anything good, to, if I ever served the brahmanas, served my parents, if I have devotion for my husband Ram, then please, may Hanuman feel no pain. So when Hanuman's tail was burning, by the grace of Mother Sita, Hanuman felt his tail like ice. Then Hanuman made himself short, small, all the ropes fell off, then Hanuman made himself big. And with his burning tail, he burned Lanka to ashes. Okay? So, so many nice instructions for us. Any questions? Yes, Uma? Yeah, you said that um, Krishna is never bewildered. Krishna is never bewildered. But I thought that when Radharani steps in the room, he's completely losing That's mind. another thing. 
Next question. Any kind of okay. question? <laughs> Stop eating meat and then you can think all these things. Yes, How can you eat meat and ask such a question? No Not too late, whole life That's you have to do this. Mm -hmm. You have to be qualified to ask such questions. Even if we give the answer, you'll never understand it if you're eating unclean foodstuffs. Okay, anything else? Ranjit, anything? So what you're doing now, you're still chanting honey now? I just do my own practice. But do you know. chant names of Krishna? Um, in my mind, no, no. Why not? What's your goal of what, if I can ask? My goal of what? Just to... What will happen to when you die? <laughs> Where would you go? Where would you go? Where would your spirit go? When you think of the time of death, you'll go there, right? Krishna says, Deva Bratha Niyatara Devam. Those who worship the demigods, go to the demigods. Then, Pitaryanti Pita Prata, those who worship the forefathers, go to the forefathers. Bhuta Yantani Bhutaja, those who worship the ghosts, go to the ghosts. Those who worship me, come to. What happens if someone goes to Krishna? They never return again. They are taught to Punaja Mamati Mati So Arjuna. When he gives up his body, remembers Krishna, he never takes birth again. Really? How long are you with Kripalu? Really? Any more? Anyway, he is bad, but anyway, some of the things he speaks are good. Don't throw the baby out with the body. He may be bad, but the most of the Christian is still the topmost. Mm. Have you read any books of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Mm. Start to read it a little bit. Okay. Any questions? No. You're vegetarian, huh? Yeah. Okay, thank God. You follow a courtesy? Yeah. No. Start. When's the courtesy? Tuesday? Monday. Yeah. 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 Silence. Yeah. No. No. My Dwarasi, so if not tomorrow is a courtesy because it's mixed with Dwarasi, then if we fast on Mahat Dwarasi. Start doing a courtesy. A courtesy is matter of devotion. People who never tell Haribo, silence, where's my shotgun? A courtesy is matter of devotion. Without mother, you cannot have a child. Without respecting courtesy, David, no one can have blood. People who are now, he never does that. Neither do his followers. So that's why not the ocean. Just start doing a courtesy and little chanting having now. Okay? Come to India again. Are you married or anything? Mm -hmm. Children, they're all grown up, right? Do you have money to travel? Mm -hmm. Come. Huh? Come for a few months. Forget that rubbish. Just come and associate with proper devotees, proper sadhus. Okay? Don't give up hope. Any questions? Give some perspective on time. Like, all these things that happen, like, long ago, but then another way, aren't they sort of happening you know, all the time? Krishna's pastimes are eternal. There's a verse. Dyadhyapi se lila gore, dyadhyapi se lila gore 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 Past times of Krishna are eternally happening, but only a qualified person can see. If you go to Vrindavan, if you're qualified, you'll see past times of Krishna even now. Okay? Because Krishna, he's about everything is eternal. Like Udo. Have you heard of Udo? When Krishna went to Mathura, Krishna sent Udo to Vrindavan. And Udo was thinking, how can I leave Krishna? I cannot tolerate Krishna's separation even for a second. And Krishna said, Udav, do not think I am here in Mathura, I am always in Vrindavan. But Udav couldn't understand what Krishna meant. That when Udav was going towards Vrindavan, then Yoga Maya, oh, electricity is one. If it goes in the freezer, it becomes cold. If it goes in the heater, it becomes hot. So Maya is one, she acts in two ways. For those who are forgetful of Krishna, she becomes Yoga Maya. Uh, Mahamaya. Have you heard of Mahamaya? 
There isn't Maya. No, yeah. She binds you, binds you in forgetfulness. And for those who love Krishna, she binds you in remembrance. So Yoga Maya. So when Edith came to Vrindavan, then Yoga Maya revealed pastimes of Krishna. He saw millions of cows running with their tails in the air. So many calves like waves of the milk ocean. Everywhere he heard shouting, catch, milk, run, do this, do that. He heard the sound of Krishna's flute, millions of gopis churning yoga. So that time Yoga Maya showed Krishna is always present in Vrindavan. Okay. If we go there, we cannot see because not qualified. Therefore Yoga Maya, Ma Maya covers us. An example, just like we have many sweets or pie, you cover it with a little bit of cheesecloth. Then flies cannot go on the cake. So when we go to the holy dam, what do we see? Pigs, stones, stools, side shops, seven ups. We do not see the such a number of of Vrindavan. It was covered by the thin covering of Yoga Maya. Therefore, Yoga Maya is very important. I'll show you. The deity of Yoga Maya came to our Krishna Bhagavan temple maybe one and a half years ago. That deity may be 600 years old. So very lucky. We bought that little bit of land and that deity was the original deity of Yoga Maya. Facebook one photo is there. So every morning we do Aarti, morning and evening to Yoga Maya. Therefore, Kripa Kori Yoga Maya. Oh Yoga Maya, give me mercy. You know, if you give me mercy, I get a place in Vrindavan. If you give mercy, I get good association of high class devotees. Did that question, did that have any relevance? What was the question? Time. Time. So don't worry, if you go to Vrindavan and qualify, you can see Krishna's pastimes there because they're eternal. Okay? Even the whole creation. Sorry? I have seen some things there and elsewhere and it makes me just think I must be strange or but Try and become full devotee. You know when I first came to Gurudev, one of the first things Gurudev said to me, don't be neutral. Neutrality has no place in devotion. One day you have to give your head. What? One day you have to give your head. Give my head? Offer your head. When Gurudev said, that, do not be, don't be neutral, neutrality has no place in devotion. He said, can you give your head for me? That's what he said, but I didn't want to tell you that, but I told you. That means, can you offer yourself fully? Can you give your head? Devotion begins from there. We have to do it. Okay. Maybe there's a few sinews that just need cutting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? Hare Krishna. Yes, Do you come regularly now that you come? Let's see. Can I promise? Yeah. Well, now we're requesting. I'm sorry. Let's see. Please. Come. I'm traveling just unless I like to be in the now. Come sometimes. Well, you mentioned Yoga Maya. Um, Vishakadi took us to underneath Govindaji Temple and there was one place, one like camp, a like cave. There was Upa Goswami, Bhajan Kutya, another Bhajan Kutya there. And in the, the, the cubby hole, in the corner of yes. there was one deity of Yoga Maya there in this one that he worshipped. Rupa Goswami, yeah. Sanada Goswami worshipped that one, Rupa Goswami worshipped that one. I'll find, you want to find a picture of my uh, yoga mind? Well, I, I was sitting right next, I looked around, and there, there she was, it looked like Mahama, sitting on a tiger, you know, with the half arms. But our one is in Onamasi, you see, she, she, she's sitting, mm. lotus, with one hand in Japa, one hand is Japa Mahama. Mm -hmm. Onamasi means she's the mother of Sandipani Rishi. She's the mother of Nandimuki. And Madhu Mango. She's the Guru of Vrindavan. There she never appears in tiger on a tiger or like this. Even Radha Krishna <laughs> do pranam to her. She's the Guru of Raj. 
The Maya is one, therefore non-devotee will see her as Durga and the tiger, etc. But devotee will always see her as Yoga Maya, Pono Devotee. Devotee will always see her as Pono Masi. Mm-hmm. And non-devotee will see her like tiger, like Durga, like Kamsa. Is Shivaya also Yoga Maya? In Dwarka. For example, Madhya Sodhi gave birth to two children. First was Krishna, second was a daughter. Who is that? Durga. Not Durga, Yoga Maya. Krishna Jani. She is called younger sister of Krishna. So Basudev came, but Yoga Maya works astonishingly. He could not see Bhujanandan and Krishna. He could only see the daughter. Therefore, he put down his Krishna. His Krishna merged with the original Krishna of Yasoda. Then Vasudev, he saw the girl, he thought Yasoda was only given birth to one child. So he took the girl and carried the girl back to Mathura. When he entered back into the prison and the chains came on, the door closed, the baby began to weep. Uh, when the soldiers heard the crying of the baby, because they were waiting for the eighth son of Vasudev, Kamsa knew he will kill me. The soldiers ran up, Kamsa, Devaki has given birth, Devaki has given birth. So he ran down with sword in hand, he saw, it's not a boy, it's a girl. Then he cursed the demigods, demigods are such cheaters, they made me do all this sinful activity for nothing. <laughs> How could I be killed by a girl, the eighth child? The time, they better to be safe inside, maybe it will transform to a boy or something later. So Devaki begged again and again, oh brother, already you've killed my six children, give me one, keep this daughter. She will not cause you any harm. Only a boy will be the cause of your death, not a girl. But Kamsa was so wicked, he took the girl and went to bash her on the stones. But she flew out of his hands. And what form did she take? Durga. With eight hands. She kicked him in the head. Idiot, fool. You cannot kill me. Your killer has taken birth somewhere else. So one reason that is really yoga mind, because Kamsa is such a demon and hates Krishna, how can he see the spiritual form of Maya? Therefore, for that reason, he could only perceive her as Maha Maya. Another reason they say, yoga mind never leaves Vrindavan. So how could Vasudev bring her out and bring too much around? So for that reason. <laughs> and also that verse is one of the evidences that Krishna's not the son of Gautamata Devaki, because she said, the one who will kill you is probably taken back somewhere else. Many things are there. In Bhagavatam, it's all given in a hidden way. The time is not there, but another day, next year. Many things are there in Bhagavatam. You cannot understand Bhagavatam by reading, you have to sit and hear. Any questions, Rajana? We'll talk after. Do you live far from here? Mm-hmm. And how come you did come in on the last day? Hare Krishna. Chanji Kuri, what do you say? Mm-hmm. I'm <laughs> 